Hi, and welcome back to Something Else Amiga. What do we got on the show today? Today, Mr. James from Des Moines has sent in another machine. What do we have? We have some newspaper. Premier packing material. We have a box. We have... Oh, Lord. I remember the email on this. This Amiga 500 needs just a little bit of work. Uh, there's, a, there's a slight problem with the Agnes socket. Shit. This is a revision 6. So we have the 512 here and a 512 here and a standard Denise and everything else is stock. Motorola 68000. 1.3 yay all right so this won't work right now so we're not even going to test it um the agnes isn't even in here maybe it's in this box disregard my purchase of chips for another machine just a couple we'll put those down so in the box of accessories so we have a socket in here uh i usually use kaikons but that's fine there's also a ZIF socket, um, a, a small IDE thing, a compact flash, uh, this thing, uh, um, an adapt, uh, a SD micro SD extender, a light for um, like a 600, a something, a A600 1200. 90 degree IDE buffered adapter. Let me look at the email and see what's going on with these parts. We know what we got to do to start is get this Agnes socket fixed. Now, just so you can see what happens here, these dry rot, and when they dry rot, this plastic outer part just literally disintegrates. You can see, oops, oops, so that's what this removal was. Now, we could just squish all these together and just stick the chip in there, and we'll be good to go. We'll put some tape on it, and everything will be great. No, we're not going to do that. That's a joke. So what we are going to do is use the WebTools 948D3 solder sucker solder station. Now, this has a soldering iron, and this has a desoldering gun. It'll stay fat on here until it heats up. It's just preheat. Comes in a variety of tips. I've done a video on this and I use this all the time. This is a great tool. It's inexpensive. If you're looking for something great and you don't need a weller or a hacko and you just don't want to waste money for something you're not going to use all the time, but I use it pretty much every day. It's never let me down. Comes the full warranty also. And for those of you who don't know, I have a cankle bracelet, I call it, right here. It's a ground plane to my table, which is wood and metal underneath. The metal goes to the grounds of my house lines power thing. I have a ground that comes out of one of my main ground rods. I put some 10-2, bonded it to the table, and there we go. Today's interrupter is my work. One second. So that's how my cankle bracelet's grounded. Now... What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some solder to the Agnes 68 pins. And the only reason I'm doing it is to fatten up the girth. It gives this something to bond to. And B, it fattens up the pegs to allow the tool something to get her lips around. And I'm not going to bore you with the adding of solder. To a Agnes. You don't have to worry about being sloppy. Man, this is a bad day. Yo, fattened up tips. Doesn't have to be pretty, doesn't have to be anything. When you're done, you're gonna extract them. I'm gonna show you a couple quick holes on this. And there you go, a clean hole. So 
does a great job as you can see and I'll evacuate the rest of the holes and I'll show you when we're done there we go one brand new Agnes socket all right I'm just gonna flux and wick this one ground that's a butthole all right, so Mr. James wrote me and says, hey, how about tackling an Amiga 500 with a janky Agnes socket? I got a replacement socket. Motherboard is in good working order except for said socket. Okay. I said, sure. I have good sockets. He goes, figured a bit as much, uh, but every little bit can help. I'll throw in some spare parts for your collection as well. So that other stuff is spare parts. So, hey, thanks, James. Um, this ought to be the last project from me. Well, for a good while, anyway. It's okay. That's what it's about. Well, there we go. One Agnes socket of unknown origin came in the bag. Now, we have an Agnes that is an anti-static little dude here. This is a... 8372 Alpha with a white dot on it. Dot to the right on the Amiga. Looking at its pins, it looks nice and clean. It wraps around the pin here. Like if I am the chip, the pin goes like this, tucks under, and like sits like this. There's little holes on the bottom of the chip that that arm, that little finger arm, PLCC dude wraps into. But check this out why might this Agnes have been having a problem See that corner at the top very close look at that corner it's touching see the holes how they just sit in there how do we fix that you take a poker and a helmet of goober so we'll compare See the bottom row there they're all close and jacked up look at the top rows yeah these are all squished out so they're going to touch this corner especially. So you just touch it and touch it. And now they go into their holes instead of being smashed flat. That way they don't touch. So I did these. See the holes clearly? It's the tuck, the Thailand tuck. That's the, the flat smash. So just keep that in mind when you're doing chips, popping stuff in and out. The corner here, they can't touch if you're putting them in the holes proper that's how they'll look but for your initial insertion you will you'll have way better luck and there we go so that's all the pins proper dot is on the edge of the chip that's to the right there you go eh okay snap on that that's it for hopefully fix I don't know it's old Agnes Agnes will be fixed and replaced let me clean up and uh, we'll go for a fire up. Uh, mouse, big toe for my 4000T power cord. This is uh, 2837516. So this is a PAL Amiga. And I got a 512 from Jen Schofield Individual Computers. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just going to turn this on first. Make sure it works. New Agnes socket. Kickstart 1.3, PAL Amiga, so it's going to have raster lines on this monitor because it's a 60 hertz monitor. It'll do 50, but it bitches. Here we go. With your signal, gray screen, raster lines of normal PAL on this machine. Kickstart 1.3 in the ROM, but, oh, there we go. Ta-da! Okay, but, 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 let me get a test kit on the tick. Ah, oh, Farts, you freaking 1.3 turd. Kickstart 1.3 being the piece of garbage that it actually is. Sorry, 1.3 lovers. You can't boot anything other than DF0. So I have to get a real floppy drive. We're going to use Mr. Vern's Andy Warhol. So this is Andy Warhol edition mouse. He's going to be the tank mouse for the repair masses. And he's had some work done, you know, a little plastic surgery there, here and there, and it's been painted. Andy Warhol edition. I don't know. It's just, it's that's what we got. 
crazy concoction to power a floppy drive. Turning it on. We should get ATK. There it goes. In the in in the in the Amiga. Alright. Does this mouse even work? I don't know if this mouse even works. I've never tried it before. Oh my, the balls are so dirty. <laughs> Memory. Half mega chip. Okay, that's all I wanted to see. Now the tickle of the pickle is this. Turn this off. I'm going to put this thing on. Never used it before. It's a super pass-through 512 Gen Showfield mod. I don't know what the chip RAM situation on this is. The JP7, the, the JP2, I don't know. Half and half. So it's set up stock, okay? And it's set JP2 for center and bottom, which is 512K of chip. So what I'm going to do real quick, take an intermission here. I'm going to send this email back to Mr. James and ask me if does he want the one meg mod while I'm in here. doesn't hurt anything. If you don't have your belly slot in, it's, it's, it's 512 and 512. Like this is, 512 fast, 512 slow, belly slot being slow, but you can remap XRAM from Gary through some magic jumpers. I've shown it before, and you get one mega chip RAM using the belly and the, and then the onboard in one second. All right, so that was fast. Mr. James got back to me very quickly, and I want to show you, he said, yeah, one meg chip would be cool. So how do you do a one meg mod on an Amiga 500 Rev 6? You need an 8372A Agnes. Take five after many phone calls. On a Rev 6 500, you need to slice JP2 on the, it's three posts, one, two, three. The center and bottom are grounded, bonded. Slice that, I'm gonna debraid it real quick and then show you. Holy phone calls. Take seven. I don't know, sorry, my phone keeps ringing. I've had to cut this into pieces. So, again, on the 500 Rev 6, JP2, which is right on top of the ROM next to the crystal, is three points. These two are factory bonded. We slice here and bond these two. I have done that. JP7 Alpha on the right next to the belly slot is the same thing. These two are bonded. One, two, three. You don't need to bridge these. Just slice the XRAM signal. Which I have to do. There we go. That's simple. I have my solder iron heated up because I blobbed the JP2. Uh, let's just turn the Amiga on. And this is stock 512 uh, as it was. And you will see here 512. That's it. Turn it off. We're going to plug in the belly slot here. And turn it back on. We'll zoom in. Testing the RAM, testing the RAM. Round two or three, one mega chip now, which is cool. That's good. Looks like we're working. Mr. James, you are good to go now. And this should serve you well for many years. Let me get this backed up. Uh, if you want to help me continue to save these boards, please consider joining the old Patreon. It helps the brother out a lot by affording the chips and parts, the tools, and the time it takes to repair these puppies. So that is all I got for now. Thank you guys for coming along on this journey. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.
out of you, no from funny, you bastard. <laughs>